up next on The Amazing Art Show, Layers. Hi, and welcome to another edition of The Amazing Art Show. I'm your host, Angie Beam. Our project today that we're going to be working on, you're going to be needing a ton of stuff. So we have no time to chit chat. I got to tell you what all you got to get. All right, you're going to need paints, acrylic paints, water paints, whatever you want to grab. Um, and some of these things that I'm going to be talking to you about are things like if you want, you can use them. It's not a have to kind of a thing. Um, stamps, any kind of stamps that you, you know, would like to use and obviously stamp pads. You can also just grab some objects around your house that have some interesting texture to them that you can also use as stamps as well. Um, also like something like this makes a really good stamp as well. You'll need brushes, you'll need markers, um, scissors, you'll need some kind of a heavy duty kind of a surface to create on. Um, you're going to need lots of different kinds of papers. So when I say that, you know, you could pull maps, make really interesting kind of papers. You could print things off the internet. You could pull things out of magazines. Um, it could just be a brown paper sack. It could be, I found this at Target. It's kind of like new, it's kind of like wrapping paper, but it's real thin. So you could do something like that. Um, if mom maybe gets a bag from some place that has an interesting pattern on it, you can use that. Um, so you just need lots of different kind of pattern papers. Let's see what else. You're going to need, you will definitely need some Mod Podge. And that's going to help you get all your papers to stick on. And a couple things that you might want to grab is some caulking. And let's see, you might want some kind of little sparkly details. You might want, these are called rub-ons, and they're pretty cool and will work good for what we're working on as well. Okay, so everything but the kitchen sink. You might even need the kitchen sink too because you're going to need some water. All right, now, our project today is all about layering, all right? Now, any good artist knows that when you start an art project, it is something that you're going to be working on for a while, and it's something that you have to devote time to, and it typically creates itself in layers. So what's a layer? Like we've got layers of skin that protect ours, so it's a, you know, some kind of a surface upon, 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 upon it, and it build, build, builds, okay? So that's what we're going to be doing today, and we're going to start with the most basic part, and this is kind of how you should always start, and with your surface that you have and then we're going to go to those papers all right now the great thing about this is you do not have to use your scissors to make it really precise and exactly how you want it to be so I'm just going to grab some that I like that are interesting to me I even have a little book here that has some I like that and let's see some stripes would be good I want some variety I don't want everything to be the same so I want to kind of think about, I want my things to work together, so you kind of want to think about that. <clears throat> and then, let's see, I really like that map. So I'm going to pull a little bit of the map. I don't even know where I got this. It was so long ago, and apparently it's sealed. Maybe there's some secret message in there. No. All right, and so I've got my pieces. Okay, now, what I'm going to need to do next is I'm going to need my Mod Podge. And anytime you are gluing surfaces like this together, you're going to do two coats. The first coat is going to go on the surface itself. So that's our little hard piece of cardboard. All right. So I'm going to paint this on, and you want it thick enough to where you can see it. So it typically is kind of white when it goes on, and you want to make your glue area bigger than your shape of paper that you have. So here's my shape of paper. I'm going to put it here, and I made it bigger than the area. Now my second coat is going to go on top of the paper. Now as I'm doing this, I'm pressing down with the brush to get any little air bubbles out. Now paper, because it absorbs moisture, and there's moisture in the Mod Podge that we're using. Um, it will sometimes kind of bubble up even though you were really good about getting it not to bubble up. 
So if it does, don't stress, it's not that big of a deal. So I'm pressing down real hard as I'm putting this on there, okay? So I'm going to continue to do that as I put the rest of my little layers on. And if you happen to see, like right over here in this corner, I do not know why, but it keeps coming up. So I'm going to run my brush bristles underneath and then back on top again to try to get it to stay flat. And you'll want to kind of check back on your pieces because sometimes they, like I said, they tend to want to kind of creep back up again sometimes. I'm going to lay that one there. And I'm going to go over it. The reason why you want to make your area of glue bigger than your piece of paper is you just want to make sure that you get all your edges because the edges are the things that are kind of the hardest to, um, you know, to get to stay down. I'm going to do that one there. And you can see I'm not being like totally neat with this Mod Podge. You don't have to be real neat with it. You can just kind of slap it on there. The thing that's kind of the most important is making sure that you get all the air bubbles out. All right, so I've got that there. Now, I just so happen to be kind of lining mine up with the corners. You don't have to, though. And you also, if you happen to have some blank places that don't have paper on them, that's okay too, because this whole project, like I said, is about layering. So what we're doing now is like your most basic step. So we're going to be putting tons and tons and tons of stuff on top of this. So if you don't have every single little surface of your cardboard covered, it's not that big of a deal. I would try to say get most of it, but you don't have to. Okay, so now... I've got just about everything covered. All right, now, I'm going to take this part of it. That leopard print is wanting to bubble up. Just press it all back down. Just give it a good once over once you get everything on there. All right, so I'm going to put this to the side for a second. And also, another little tip for you, if you will get a piece of wax paper out of the pantry, um, that works good because it doesn't stick to it, but it, you know, it gives you a good working surface. All right, so I'm going to put this away. Now, I also talked to you about pulling images off of the internet or pulling images out of a magazine. So I have, you know, some that I pulled out of magazines, and there are some also that I pulled off of the internet. So I've got flowers. I've got a little artist palette. I've got weathered wood, I've got a bird, several birds, and I've got some cupcakes. Don't those cupcakes look delicious? I kind of think I want to do a cupcake. I actually think I like this one, and I'm not cutting this out because it doesn't have to be a precise kind of a cut, so I'm just going to tear it out. And it's even okay if you've got, you know, some of the white showing. I usually kind of like to get the white off, but it's up to you. Um, so for that, I'm just going to tear it. I also like this flower, so I'm going to pull that too. And there isn't a real big science to tearing this, but don't tear straight through your image because that would kind of defeat the whole purpose. Um, so I've got that and that. And then my cupcake, I'm actually going to use scissors because this is the one thing that I want. It's going to be in the very middle of my um, composition, and I want it to be the thing that you notice the most. So I'm going to just kind of roughly cut it out now. And the state that you see it in now, it's not necessarily going to stay in, but this is just kind of our jumping off post. All right, so I got it out of there. I like that artist palette too, though. I'm having a little bit of a hard time wanting to use that. Okay, so I'm going to very carefully cut out my cupcake. And in this particular photo that I have, there are other cupcakes behind it. So we want 
just the focus. We want to draw your eye in just towards one. So we're just going to cut out that one. And this cupcake is very special. It has a cherry on top, which doesn't look like a real cherry. It kind of looks like maybe it's gum or something. And it has a little wafer in it, kind of like a waffle cone wafer. All right, now, the next thing that I want you to do is you're going to be embellishing this picture. So when I say embellishing, that means that you're going to take some of the existing um, elements that you see in it and you're going to build upon it. So here's my cupcake. I'm just going to start real basic and simple to start out. And let's see what I want to do. I've got just some white kind of gel markers and I'm going to go over some of the designs and the details. So you're using some of the elements that are there and you can also create some of your own. Like I might want to, on this cherry, this I think it's bubblegum, this little bubblegum cherry, I'm going to put some little highlights and I'm actually going to go over that in just a little bit with something else. But And then let's see, I'm going to do, I want to do this zigzag around here. And there's really, I mean, it's up to you to decide what you would like to embellish. And you can get real crazy with this. You can get your paints, like let's say you found an image, but you didn't like the color of it. You can paint over it. Use your paints and just paint right over it. Now, one of the things that I actually just did this lesson with some friends of mine, we had a big paint party day and they are all, most all of them are teachers or they were teachers at some point in time. And they had the best time going and doing this. But what I thought was very interesting, and this is just like with my kids at school, I've lost something that I'm looking for. Um, they were done way before I was. And then we were talking about that and they were like, well, why are we done before you are? And I was like, that's a really good question. And that's because a lot of times when you are working, I think sometimes you get in a big hurry, but the more time you spend on it, the better it's gonna look. So as much as you wanna hurry so that you can see what it's gonna look like and you can enjoy the art, sometimes it's better to go ahead and spend that extra time because it'll end up looking even better in the long run. All right, now, so the other thing, now I'm gonna be doing a couple no-nos today and I'm just gonna go ahead and warn you. I'm just gonna put my finger in here. You could, get a, you could get a paintbrush and you can get in there, but it's kinda tight and I don't need a whole lot of it, so I'm just gonna use my finger. So I'm just gonna dip it inside. And this is by Prang and it is a glitter paint, but what I like about it is it's real transparent. So when I rub it on here, you can still see the paper through it. It's not real opaque. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to put that on this cherry. And you can see how automatically it makes that cherry really pop. And I didn't put it all over the cherry. I just kind of put it more down at the bottom. And then I'm going to get rid of that. And the other thing is we talked earlier about the caulking. And I'm going to put a little bit of caulking on my paper and dip my finger in as well. And I'm going to just add some of this on where there's frosting on my cupcake just to kind of make it look a little more like frosting. It's going to give it some actual texture, not just visual texture, but actual texture. And once I get it on there, because I want it to, you know, look a little more like frosting, I'm going to take my, just the end of a brush. I'm just going to kind of run it through there to give it some of the lines that you might see. All right. Okay, so I've got that. Now I'm going to come back and I'm going to do something else to that in a little bit, but for the time being, I'm going to stop. Actually, you know what? I'm not. I think I want to. There was. Some... No, no, no. I'm not done yet. Wait. I want to do this. I'm going to add a couple little highlights on the chocolate. 
and now I'm going to be done with that for a little bit. Okay, now back to our background. Okay, now we talked about the everything, you know, in the kitchen sink kind of a thing. And one of the things I didn't mention to you, and you don't have to have it, but I really like to use it. And that is like, if you have a gift card that you've gotten, um, you can actually cut your gift card up once you've used it. And it's useless at that point. And you can actually use it as a really cool painting applicator. So um, I'm going to get my paint. I'm just using this as my palette today. I'm gonna put that on there. And I'm going to dip my card in there. And the trick to this is you have to kind of lay the card out almost flat. So, and then you pull it. So you're going to pull down. All right. And I might get some over here. And you don't even have to do a full, you know, swipe. You can do just little partial ones if you would like to. That area where I just have cardboard, I could go ahead and fill it in with that if I wanted to. Um, the other thing that you can do as well, is you also want to kind of think about and look at the colors that you're working with in your, in your design, your, what color are your papers and that kind of thing. So try to kind of stay in that palette as much as you can. I'm just going to wipe that off. And if your colors happen to mix, that's no big deal. Now the thing that I really like about the card is that it puts the paint on there, but you can still see through it. It's transparent, so you can still see your designs underneath. And I'm going to do that one through there. Okay, now, other thing that you might want to consider doing is some finger painting. And I do this a lot. I know at school, I don't do this. But at home, with my own paints, I do this quite a bit. So I like to use white just to kind of... Um, kind of blend areas in and it just kind of gives some interest and I typically not always but I like to kind of do straight lines and I'll use it to kind of break up the middle of my design now keep in mind that we've still got you know our cupcake so where is the cupcake gonna go so you want to kind of think about that and as you're adding your other colors you want to think okay is it gonna show up better under one color or over another so kind of think about that when you're working, and I'm going to do a little more right here. Okay, now, remember how I also had these images, and I'm going to go ahead as soon as I find what I did with my brush, and I'm going to pop those images on there as well. And it's going to go over some of my paint that I just did, and that's no big deal. And as I'm doing this, because my paint that I just put on there is wet, the Mod Podge is actually grabbing some of the paint and it's putting it on top of the image, which is gonna work out super fabulous. And I think I'm gonna hold off on my flowers. Okay, next thing I want to do is I want to add I think I'm going to darken up just around just the edges of my cupcake so it will show up better on my background. You could do this with the black. I've got kind of a teal, um, tealish kind of metallic color. And I'm just going to outline around the whole thing. I'm going to be real careful right around that caulking that I put down there because I don't want to get my markers in that. Okay, now I'm going to use my Mod Podge again. And this is when I'm going to be placing my, um, my main thing, my object, whatever it is that I've decided to put. So I'm going to kind of move it around in a couple places. I like it over here. So I'm going to, once again, do the Mod Podge first, make it bigger than what my object is. And then I'm going to go ahead and put that down. 
Now, usually I would have waited a little bit longer because my, um, my caulking isn't quite dry yet, but I'll work around it, it's no big deal. Okay, so now I've got that part mainly finished, okay? So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna dry it momentarily. Just let it, it doesn't have to be super dry, but you don't want it to be super tacky either. All right, now, stamps. We talked about stamps earlier, and you can use stamps in lots of different ways. Um, you can, let's see if I can get this one to work. You can actually take your object, it doesn't have to be, I'm gonna use this. It doesn't have to be um, just a traditional kind of a stamp. You can pretty much, you know, make anything into a stamp. You can make vegetables into stamps. You can cut erasers into stamps. You can find just objects around your house that you like the pattern and you can make it into a stamp. So this is very subtle, but it's just giving me a little bit of a grid pattern. And I'm just gonna put it in a couple places. And I'm just using my fingers, and yes, your fingers are gonna be dirty. <laughs> You'll live, it'll be all right. All right, so I've got that in a couple little places. Um, I've also got, this is one of my favorites too, bubble wrap is so much fun. Bubble wrap you can take, I think I want some orange. Now the thing with the bubble wrap is, is that you need a brush and you're just gonna, and you can see this has got paint that I've used before. You don't really have to wash it, it's no big deal. And you're just gonna lightly run your brush over and it doesn't even have to be precise, and you're gonna stamp it. So just find some places, and it doesn't matter if it even comes out to be a full, you know, like exactly how you did it, it's fine. It's just giving it some texture, all right? So I could let that dry, and then we talked about rub-ons. I think I have maybe one little spot where I could do a rub-on, because that's the only spot on my paper that appears to be dry. Rub-ons, if you happen to have any, sometimes they're kind of hard to find, um, but you just lay it down and you just rub on top of it really, really hard. And then lift off and it's going to leave the image there. Now the one thing about that is, is that you do want to do a tad bit of Mod Podge over the top of it because it will lift off if you don't, all right? So I could do those all over the place, um, a couple more of those at least. And then my last little thing that I wanna show you is going to be some kind of a, just traditional kind of a stamp. I really want this one. I'm gonna use black on this one. And this one, I'm gonna stamp it down. And kind of the same thing we talked about before. You don't have to see all of the image. It can just be partial. You're just giving it some depth, okay? All right, now, last thing I wanna show you. You could, you could keep going on this forever, and I'm telling you right now, like if I was working on this for real, hours I would be spending, all right? But this is, we're making it a little bit faster. You can come back with glitter paint and hit um, different areas and just add a little bit of glitter. Um, sometimes I will even just take my glitter and just put it straight on there. Oops. And then I'll just rub it off with my finger in places. And you can keep the paint real thick in places because you're just gonna let it go dry. All right. Um, something else that you might wanna think about doing is taking a little bit of other colors and running it across your main image a little bit, and I know that that kind of, you're thinking, well, that kind of defeats the purpose of having it there, but it actually ties it into your work really, really nice, so you might kind of think about that. And then last but not least, if you happen to have some, this, they sell this at Michael's, Hobby Lobby, all different kinds of places, and it's really, um, it's like makes it super, super glossy, so I would put it probably over things that I really want to show up in my picture. So instead of doing this one, because I'm running out of time, I'm gonna show you mine over here. So this is my finished one, and you can see how it gives it a really glossy and super shiny kind of appearance. 
and I've got it on my lime down here. Just the things that I really want to show up. So ladies and gentlemen, let's go to our quote for today. Starting to paint, I feel gloriously free, quiet and alone. Henry Matisse. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, um, one thing you might notice on this particular example, this is on a canvas, like a stretched canvas. So you can do it on surfaces like this as well. Um, these make really awesome cards. Like you might give one to your nice new teacher. Um, she would love some, some of your artwork. Moms, dads, grandparents would love it. All right, guys, that is our show today. We are layered up and ready to go. Now go out and make some amazing art.